Johan asks, in your example you show, firstly, there is no correlation between the two variables, being the dependent and independent, but then using the same variables, your regression equation shows a relationship between the two, hence the ability to predict. Is that possible, or am I missing the point? Okay, this is a question that crops up when students start doing their regression projects. So here's an example. I've got three variables, the y being the dependent variable, and two independent variables, x and s. And let's say that these are continuous scale. First, I look at the correlation between the three. Analyze, correlate, bivariate. I've done a video on this already about interpretation of this, so I'll go quickly. Correlation between y and x is positive and significant. Between y and s is small, and anyway, it's not significant. And between the two independent variables, they're negative correlated and significant. Next, let's fit a regression on y on s. Regression linear. So what we see here is that the coefficient on s is not significant. So that is consistent with the result we saw in the correlation because there's no significant correlation between the y and s. Now let's see what happens when we regress y and both independent variables. Okay, and here's the result. And now what we see is that here are the two independent variables, s and x. We're really interested in this look, the t-test. They're both significant now. So before, just on y on s, was not significant, but now it's significant. So that's demonstration of Johan's kind of point. So let's step back a bit. Two variables, y and the independent variable, are not correlated, but when they're included in a multiple regression, it becomes significant. That's not consistent, or is it? OK, I've run one more regression to explain what's going on here. This variable, independent variable, what you call s, which is not correlated with y, but is correlated with the other independent variable, is called a suppressor variable. There are varying definitions of what a suppressor variable is, but they commonly share the same features, namely a. The variable, this suppressor variable, is uncorrelated with the dependent variable. b, by itself, is insignificant, as you can see here, as a predictor for the dependent variable. And C, it enhances the predictive ability of the other independent variable. What do I mean by this? Well, look at the regression on Y on X alone. The coefficient is 0.55, it's significant. The fit, the R square, is 0.175. Now look at it when we include the suppressor variable. The impact of x on y now is higher in magnitude. Look at it now gone up from about 0.5 to 0.93ish. And that's what I mean by is the suppressor has enhanced the impact of the other independent variable on y. And also the R square has now increased so the fit is much better than before. Of course R square will be higher simply because you've been got one more covariate independent variable in there but it's, the suppressor has also helped to increase this thing um, by a fair bit. Once you include the suppressor in the model, it could or may not be significant. Here it is significant. Okay, so this kind of example demonstrates the importance of when you're just looking at bivariate correlations, that's usually not enough. It's not enough to decide whether or not it should be in the multiple regression model. You've got to actually put the model as well. Okay, if you've got any comments on this, just uh, feel free to drop, drop me a message. Cheers.